There is a war for our souls. Satan knows if he can knock off the head of the household, everything else dies, right? You take out the head, the body dies. And then when we're losing men, we're losing leaders. Every single person who wants to serve the Lord finds themselves at war with Satan, not because we ask for it, but because that is the nature of Satan. He detests what a good Catholic man stands for. Uh, we think of angels as, as good guys, and, and they are. They were created good, but God gave them free will. And this particular one, Lucifer, actually, light bearer, led a rebellion against God. And so they were cast out of heaven. Satan comes after us, who are God's children, who are made in the image of God. Not only does God have a plan for your life, so does Satan. And so I see a real need to make people aware of this battle that we're engaged in and that it's a real spiritual battle. We're not gonna see the snipers. We're not gonna hear the gunshots. We're not gonna feel the bullets because they pierce our hearts, our souls. These are invisible. What they take out is life that is divine and eternal. We really tend to overestimate the natural and underestimate the supernatural. What's the role of a Catholic man? The only duty that's gonna matter at the end is if he gets his family to heaven. He has got to lead his family through the attacks of Satan, to be ready for the judgment, and so each and every one of them gets to heaven. A priest told me once that, yeah, God knows your sins, but he calls you by your name. The devil knows your name, but he calls you by your sins. Before we sin, the devil is the, plays the role of a comforter, that, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, there are guys doing worse things than this, but then after the sin, he becomes the accuser, where, oh, you think God loves you now? You think God could use you now, you hypocrite? The devil wants us constantly to think that we can't really live um, this vocation that God gives to us. And it's in living our vocation that we have an impact on others. That's, we're social beings by God's design, and he created each of us to be a gift for others. Satan is like a, a military strategist or a commander that will prowl outside the walls of your fortress, being your soul. And he'll look at where your defenses are weakest. You know, is it the pride? Is it the anger? Is it the lust? Because where the defenses are weakest, that's where he wants to break in to get into the fortress itself. One of the core measures of looking at how the church grows is to look at things like infant baptism, adult baptism, confirmation, kids in religious ed. And what we see in, since the year 2000, numbers have dropped between 20 and 30%. This is a disaster a beyond proportion. Spiritual warfare occurs on a variety of levels. The most common would be temptation. That's the most frequent, the most common, the most universal experience of spiritual warfare. The battle that men are called to engage in right now is like a battle to be a light that shines in the darkness of our culture. One of the things that we can do with pornography is justify it saying, well, this is just a weakness that I have, or this is what so many men are struggling with. I'm just one of them but we have to be almost shocked into realizing that this is the way that the evil one is, is entering. I remember I went to confession one time and the priest just looked at me and he said something I'll never forget. He said, the devil wants to destroy your family, but he has to come through you to get him. And so what he wants you to do is develop these habits of sin so that when he comes to attack your family, you're not even a threat. I'm the oldest of six kids. So being the oldest of six, I was my father's sidekick. My father's an alcoholic. The more financial problems he had, the more he would drink. My father took me to a strip club when I was four or five. I'd go to the bars with him and I'd sit on a bar stool next to him. The alcoholism takes you into dark places. I just graduated out of eighth grade. We were at a friend's house. 
She brought these, uh, I thought it was marijuana, it ended up it was angel dust. And I smoked that, that was the first drug I ever did. And it definitely was that angels that I saw. These older boys invited me to go light fireworks with them behind their house, which happened to be a cemetery. They took me into the cemetery and sexually abused me. They said I was gay and that I didn't deserve to live. They told me how they were gonna kill me. So they took a shovel. They had me dig my own grave. <laughs> it ended up that somebody came into the cemetery and I ran away. So I drank a lot, I did a lot of drugs. Sin is like a stone. You know, you pick them up, confession is a place to drop them off. But I chose to put them on my back. And whenever you do things in hiding, in darkness, it'll always come out because the devil is the accuser and he'll blame you for it after you've done it. So after my sexual abuse, for many years, I questioned my masculinity. I questioned my faith. I questioned God. So I went to the army. In the army, I was a full-blown alcoholic. I would have blackouts left and right. I was drunk every day, sometimes 24 hours a day. So then it became cocaine, and it became a lot of cocaine. So much cocaine that I had to start taking Valiums to keep my heart from exploding. And I got a girlfriend, and she was pregnant from another man. It wasn't me. She wanted me to drive her to get an abortion. I helped to get the abortion. And as soon as I did that, the accuser, the devil, he showed me right in my face that I just killed a baby. This was one of the other stones I had to put in my backpack to carry around. 1997, I went on a Crucero retreat. That was the start of the change of my life because I was told to do a general confession. It was like the Blessed Mother reached out and gave me a bear hug and never let go. When you have a prayer life, you could take a storm and survive. Just brush off and continue like it never happened. We have confession, the greatest weapon against the devil. Confession makes sins invisible. Go to confession frequently. I try to go every two weeks. The Eucharist, it strengthens your armor as a man. A sacramental marriage with daily prayer just fortifies us to a point where we could, we could fight any battle and not worry about what's gonna happen. There are days when I fight temptations. Don't give an inch to the enemy. Stay strong. One day, we're hoping to hear those words well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter the kingdom of heaven. I want to hear those words when I die. Within martial arts, one of the principles is to use your enemy's strength and momentum against them. The same holds true in the spiritual life. If the devil is tempting somebody to impurity and they know that that's the temptation coming, I teach them to pray the Memorare as a block and the St. Michael prayer as a strike. So you block and strike. Every man needs to walk into that breach and begin to fight that battle, which means you've got to know the weapons. Uh, he needs to know the power of the Eucharist, the power of prayer, the power of the rosary. You know, the rosary's focused on some beautiful, powerful aspect of Christ's battle with the enemy and his victory over the enemy. Each one of those mysteries, if we dwell on it deeply, uh, can show us important aspects of, of our battle and how to win it. I love St. Michael, and I've done the St. Michael prayer you know, quite a bit, but I found the prayer that works even more is the Memorare to the Blessed Lady. She is the absolute antithesis to Satan. At the end of the day, her rise came through her humility his, the fall, came through his pride. 
We can learn so much about how to do spiritual warfare from our Lord. The first thing I think we have to notice is that um, he went out to pray and fast, and he did that for 40 days. Now, if even the Son of God has to prepare for spiritual battle in his human nature by prayer and fasting, how much more so each one of us? We can see in the Gospels how Jesus would deliver people from unclean spirits through the power of his word. The disciples were also given this task of performing exorcism. Now, it's an interesting thing that in the Greek, the word for exorcism is ex horkidzo. The word horkidzo literally means to oath out. But when you look at the Latin word for a covenant oath, you see the Latin word is sacramentum. Because the sacraments are the ways in which we get divine power to overcome any diabolical influences. Be bold. Know that this is real. Don't be fearful, because Jesus Christ is far more powerful than Satan. If Jesus is the platform on which we stand, we are victorious. But there is a fight, and there's no getting around it. St. Ignatius' exercise, spiritual exercises, you visualize a battlefield where there's Satan and his henchmen with one flag, the standard, planted. And then there's Jesus Christ with his flag planted. So you, hit, you have two images, stark contrast. And so this standard is a phenomenal meditation for all of us men to, to really ask ourselves, where do we stand? Are we all in or not?